commentates for Talk Sport. He's a great mate of the show, Tom Rennie. I could be wrong, my friend, but has there ever been a World Cup with so much last day drama in the group stage? Yeah, it has been a bit wild. It has been a bit wild, this this group stage. I think it's because there are so few really outstanding teams in this tournament and so many teams that are past their best. So many teams like Belgium, like Germany, who have both gone out today, like Wales, one or two others. What we're seeing is the last spurt of a once great team. And a lot of players, it would seem, a lot of squads have tried to go on one tournament too many. And that's led to a lot of really poor performances, really surprised results in terms of big names going out. So it, it just seems to be coming together in that way. There aren't many outstanding teams. There's about four or five teams that will win it. And there's up and coming energetic teams taking on over the hill aging teams. And that has led to results like today, specifically um, the victory for Japan over Spain, the victory for Morocco in the previous games they played to win their group in Group F. Um, and, and it has been a pretty decent group stage, I've got to say. All right, before we get on to Japan and that second goal, which, I mean, for goodness sake, I mean, that was worse than South Korea against Spain in 02. I don't know how the VAR got that wrong. But can we also please forever bury this idiotic phrase called the golden generation? You're the golden generation if you goddamn win something. Belgium, you've won nothing. You are chocolates is what you are. You melt, you are soft. Yeah, I mean, they are past their best. They knew they were past their best. The fact that Roberto Martinez, the manager has resigned within about 25 minutes of, of them being knocked out of the World Cup, tells you they all knew this wasn't going to be their year. The World Cup last, <clears throat> last time around, forgive me, that was their World Cup. That was their time. That was their moment. That was when they had the team to get the job done. And they blew it then. They blew it then. I think ended up third beating in that third place playoff, losing to, to France in the semi-final. That was their time. This time around, apart from Kevin De Bruyne, who is peaking? Who is at the very top of their game at this moment in time? Certainly not Toby Alderweireld, who I thought had retired. Same with, with Jan Vertonghen. Um, Leander Dendonka didn't get a game for Wolverhampton Wanderers, so got loaned out to Aston Villa. That's not great news. And Lukaku came on at half-time oh. and missed more chances than maybe any other player has across the entire tournament. It was miss after miss after pitiful miss. And I feel very sorry for Lukaku in a way because he clearly isn't sharp, he clearly isn't fit, but also some of those misses, unforgivable, really. Tom Rooney is with us from TalkSport before he goes on holiday to Spain, and hopefully that you can find a television over there, <laughs> because I know that you will be watching. Japan beating Spain, Costa Rica to Germany 4. I mean, you know, what I've loved about the, these simultaneous matches is that with 20 minutes to go, there's four different scenarios, and then it changes, then it changes. You've got to watch it on a split screen. This is the modern football fan, Tom. We can't just have one game up. You've got to have both games up simultaneous. Well, to be fair, I'm not sure it's a modern football fan thing. It's the fact that modern technology allows it. And I was watching the game over on ITV here in the UK tonight. I was watching Japan, Spain. And they kept flashing up the goals from Costa Rica, Germany. And I kept thinking, leave it on. Leave it on. There's a reason everyone bought 40-inch flat-screen TVs. It was because we wanted to have more images coming into our brains at a simultaneous moment. So give us the non-stop, endless flat screen. Yes. And give us the split screen. I want the split screen. And they kept... Also, they kept talking to us about permutations, and God bless Clive Tilden and Ali McCoy for trying to explain it to me, but they had a graphic. Leave the graphic on the screen so I can see what's going on. Yeah, yeah. It was just, it was extremely frustrating, though extremely thrilling as well. And Japan, it's funny, I, I watched Japan in a friendly against the United States back in September, and they beat them by a couple of goals. And, you know, the analysis from, from me, I was working in America at the time, and we were talking about you know, the U.S. men's team, they can't beat Japan. And I thought, I can't believe we're not talking about how good this Japan team are. I can't believe we're not talking about um, Kam Kamada, who plays for Eintracht Frankfurt, Marita in midfield, who was superb yet again. Uh, the veteran Maya Yoshida, once of Southampton, absolutely superb in this game. In a five-man defense, Mitomo, who plays for Brighton, absolutely fantastic. Uh, Kubo, an incredible performance from him once again. The goal from Doan in the 48th minute, the blaster from distance that beats Simon. Incredible. They have a great energy, a great team spirit, a great work ethic. And once again, we keep seeing a team who is up and coming, energetic and vibrant against a team who, who maybe aren't anywhere near their best. Maybe a big name. I've got older players who maybe shouldn't be at this World Cup. 
Busquets, Morata, players who are too young to really be at their peak, Pedri, Gavi. Uh, and the fact that uh, Luis Enrique has played Rodri at centre-half for every game for Spain has also been really interesting. Again, it's another team who are spluttering and trying to find themselves against the team that they should be beating. But they're a, a better team, a, a product, if you like, of a long-term plan as opposed to a couple of weeks before the tournament. What's the squad, chaps? What should we do? And Japan deservedly have won the group and knocked out Germany. Incredible. 